In my quest to share scientific insights about using probiotics for honeybee health and empower beekeepers to make informed decisions, I presented evidence in my last video showing how certain kinds of bacteria might bind, absorb, and eliminate toxic chemicals. This suggests that bacteria could help honeybees counteract the toxic effects of pesticides. Today, I want to share more intriguing experiments suggesting that these fascinating bacteria might be also helping honeybees to fight powerful pathogens. The research I'm about to discuss today focuses on a common honeybee parasite called Nosema serrani, which causes serious health issues in honeybee colonies. Scientists from the University of Gelk conducted a multi-year study to test the effects of several prebiotics and probiotics on this parasite and their impact on honeybee colonies. They were particularly interested in whether these beneficial microbes could reduce the presence of Nosema serrani spores and improve the overall colony health. Probiotics are living beneficial microorganisms that, when consumed, can provide health benefits by supporting the existing gut microbiome. In contrast, prebiotics are specialized compounds that act as food for beneficial bacteria already present in the gut, helping them thrive and multiply. Think of probiotics as adding new beneficial bacteria to the system, while prebiotics are like fertilizer that helps the good bacteria already present to grow better. The experiments began with over 150 colonies from the University of Guelph Research Apiary, divided into groups of about 15 colonies each for testing different compounds. These compounds included three prebiotics, eugenol, chitosan, and narigenine, and one probiotics, Enterococcus phylsium. The compounds were provided to the bees through sugar syrup or protein patties, and their effects were measured over two years. In the first year, researchers treated the colonies in both spring and fall. The spring treatments showed that prebiotics eugenol and arginine, as well as the probiotic Enterococcus phylsium, significantly reduced Nosema serrani spore numbers and increased honey production. However, the effectiveness varied depending on the administration method. For instance, Enterococcus phylsium was more effective when provided in protein patties, while arginine worked best in sugar syrup. In the second year, the the researchers focused on the two most promising treatments, Enterococcus phylsium and arginine. The results showed that colony treated with either of these had significantly lower Nosema serrani spore counts and larger adult bee populations compared with untreated colonies. The statistically significant measurements include population size and spore count reduction, indicating that Enterococcus phylsin and naringenine can enhance bee resiliency to parasites and improve colony vitality under the study conditions. Researchers speculated that the production of lactic acid by the bacteria might be the key mechanism explaining their results. Lactic acid is believed to thicken the bee's gut lining, potentially making it more difficult for Nosema spores to penetrate and infect bee cells. Additionally, the lactic acid produced by this bacteria has antimicrobial properties, which might further help reduce the spread of harmful pathogens in the gut. Narigenine, a compound derived from citrus fruit, has been shown to have anti-inflammatory effects. In bees, it seems to reduce the oxidative stress caused by Nosema infection, allowing bees to live longer and be more productive. The colony treated with Narigenin had fewer Nosema spores, higher number of adult bees, and better honey production, suggesting it might boost the bees' overall health and immunity. This study provides evidence for the beneficial use of probiotics and prebiotics in honeybee health, indicating that we might have a natural, no-antibiotic option to help honeybees fight harmful pathogens like Nosema serrani. As I mentioned in my newsletter, this video series was inspired by a letter published in Bee Cultural Magazine by Dr. Kirk Anderson, a USDA researcher. The letter suggested that those who believe in the beneficial effect of non-native probiotics on honeybee health are essentially wasting their time and money. Is that true? The letter was apparently a companion for the scientific article published by Dr. Anderson and Randy Oliver from scientificbeekeeping.com that show a set of experiments in field conditions showing no apparently beneficial use 
for the probiotics application. And I will cover this article in a future video. However, I'm still uncertain about how to take this letter. While I respect his First Amendment rights and encourage more researchers to speak up for open discussions, I have concerns that strong opinions from the government could unintentionally influence the free market. We know that honeybee research is a difficult field to draw definitive conclusions in because of the number of variables scientists cannot control in field conditions. Based on my research and personal experience in testing probiotics, I remain neutral. I can see things going both ways. I am not convinced that there is zero chance of some beneficial effect under specific conditions. I will continue to present scientific articles discussing the main arguments for and against the use of non-native probiotics in honeybee health, along with interviews of specialists in the field. This approach should help us better understand this fascinating area of study so you can make your own informed decisions based on multiple perspectives. A big thanks for Strong Microbials for sponsoring this video series. Please check them out, conduct your own experiments, take responsibility for your own decisions, and let me know your results. Click here to watch another video in this video series. Thanks for watching. Inside the Hive.tv, the show about bees. See you guys in the next video.